flies are everywhere we go, literally. It's believed that flies originated in Asia, but these days, they live everywhere people live, only excluding Antarctica and maybe a couple of islands. Flies have traveled the oceans following humans, but they never go anywhere alone. In the wilderness and deserts where humans are absent, you won't find any flies. We know them well, but we all have that unanswered question about flies. Why do flies rub their limbs? Turns out, they just clean them. It's this simple. A fly has hair all over its body. The hairs on the limbs serve as detectors for flying, finding food, and doing whatever else the fly business is. They have to keep their limbs clean at all times. So, they just rub them every time they get a chance. Their limbs are sensitive, and they serve more than one purpose. Apparently, the limbs have taste receptors, so the flies can taste with their feet. They can land on their potential meal and wander around it, giving it a good taste before consuming it. Flies can't chew, so they're on an all-liquid diet and drink their food. If the food they have picked as their next meal is solid, they have a special ritual to make it edible. A fly regurgitates digestive juices on their soon-to-be food, and those juices break it into the smallest pieces that can be drunk. Also, spitting out those juices frees up space in their stomachs for new food. Quite often, flies sit on our food. They can appear harmless, but it's not exactly true. First, remember that they spill out those juices onto your food, which is already gross enough. But there's more. You have to keep in mind that flies land everywhere, and it's not always flowers, but all the gross stuff as well. And flies especially like that said gross stuff, like rotting foods, dumpsters, and even worse. So, their limbs collect all the germs and microbes from those places. When a fly lands on your food, it transfers those germs to your meal. Some of the microbes they transfer can even cause diseases like cholera and typhoid. There was even an experiment once made to demonstrate how it works. There were two bowls. One contained a red powder of some kind of spice and the other bowl had white rice in it. Flies were let in and they would migrate from the spice bowl to the rice bowl and back. Soon enough, rice got covered with red spice. Now, replace harmless spice with something grosser and rice with your dinner. So you should always cover your food to make sure some fly doesn't take a walk on it and step and spit all over it. If you're eating, make sure you swat them away. But don't worry if some annoying fly manages to sit on your sandwich for a second before you kick it out. No need to throw the sandwich out. If you act it fast, then you're safe. Also, experts say that an average healthy human has a strong enough immune system to repel parasites. Even though flies are gross and annoying, bugging around and tickling you with their limbs, they do serve some good. They're responsible for pollinating flowers. They collect nectar from them, which gets stuck to their hair on their bodies. And then they pollinate the next flower when landing on it. Also, if flies didn't exist, our planet would be even dirtier. Flies recycle some of the human waste. Flies are also an important part of the ecosystem since they're food for birds, spiders, lizards, frogs, and many more. Without flies, they'd all go extinct. Apart from flies having the superpower of tasting with their feet, there are other interesting facts about them too. They can walk on both horizontal and vertical surfaces and even upside down. They can do it because each one of a fly's feet has two pads with tiny hair. And those hairs produce a glue-like substance that allows flies to have an excellent grip. Flies have unique eyes, which have a large complex of 3,000 to 6,000 simpler eyes within each of the two compound eyes. A fly's eyes don't move, but its vision is nearly 360 degrees they can see behind their back. So, wherever you are, a fly definitely sees you and every other danger with one or a few of their thousands of monitors. In addition to the two compound eyes, flies also have three simple eyes located on their foreheads, which serve as a compass and allow a fly to navigate. They also have an amazing reaction time. Ever wondered why it's so hard to swat a fly? 
well to apply worse slots. That's because they see things in slow motion compared to us. Species have different perceptions of speed. The speed we see will be twice faster for a turtle, and it will be four times slower for a fly. Turn a video on at 0.25 times speed and imagine someone approaching you with this speed. Well, that's how a fly sees you. So yes, it has enough time to escape. A fly has just one set of wings. But in addition to their pair of wings, they also have so-called halters, which allow them to take off fast. Millions of years ago, halters were serving as a second pair of wings. Now they help to take off and also to balance the air. If a fly loses one of the halters, it'll start flying in circles. And if both of them go missing, it won't be able to fly anymore at all. Also, even though their wings beat up to 1,000 times per minute, they're also very slow flyers, only reaching the speed of 4.5 miles per hour. If a fly lives in an urban area with enough people and garbage around, it doesn't fly far away from the place of residence, only having a territory of a bit over 3,200 feet. Rural flies are far more explorative, and they can fly away up to 7 miles at a time. A fly doesn't live long. Its lifetime is just around 30 days. But during this time, they lay from 500 to 800 eggs each on average. But it's not 1,000 at once. It's several goes throughout their life, with 75 to 100 eggs at once. The eggs hatch within 24 hours, and it takes a week in total for an egg to turn into a grown fly. And then the cycle continues. In colder climates, this process can take twice as long. A timber fly is the biggest fly species, which lives in Central and South America. They can grow up to 3.15 inches. Also, flies have beds, or more like their favorite spot to stay and sleep. They have a comfy place, somewhere close to their source of food, and they come there to rest at night. If you ever had your house flooded with flies, here are a few tips for you to reduce their population. First, it's important to understand what they're attracted to. They're attracted to other flies and even to the smell of flies living there. And flies have an amazing sense of smell. So if you hosted even one fly, expect to get more guests. If you have any traces of flies, like fly specks, they'll find you too. Make sure to wash your walls and surfaces. Next, flies love garbage and rotting produce. They lay eggs in rotten food and meat, so make sure to keep your food in the fridge, cover it, and keep the trash in tightly sealed containers. And of course, take out the trash regularly. Flies have a sweet tooth, or more like a sweet foot, since they taste with their feet. And they love syrup and other sugary liquids. They're also fond of soda and vinegar, so make sure to keep those stored and always wipe after yourself if you spill something. Lastly, they like to hide and live in dirty and leaky drains. They eat the bacteria from there. So always clear your drains and repair any leaks right away. Also, it'll help to seal all the cracks in your floor, ceiling, and walls if you have any. That's one of their ways to get into the house. Mosquitoes, bed bugs, fleas, beetles, gadflies, millions of insects out there can't wait to feast on the most delicious dessert, you. Especially if it's warm outside and you sweat a little. The good news is that not many bugs want to eat you. It's estimated that there are about 10 million species of insects in the world, and only 14,000 of them feed on your vital fluid. A few hundred among this group regularly bite people. Um, okay, yeah, it's still too many. But it wasn't always like that. In the distant past, insects didn't dare to attack huge animals for food. They developed their ability to feed on blood from 200 to 65 million years ago. And there are several theories why this happened. Imagine small beetles and insects living in the nest of some flying dinosaur or a giant ancient bird. They feed on bird secretions, rotten grass, mm, leaves, or mushrooms. Then a piece of skin or a feather of an animal falls on their table. Insects taste it, and they like it. Then a dinosaur arrives, and the beetles sense a familiar smell. They climb on its skin and bite it. Or they accidentally fall on an open sore of a bird and taste it. For insects, 
this would be the most delicious thing they had ever eaten. Yeah, I agree, it's a pretty low bar. Now, other insects have a long, thin feeding tube called a proboscis. They use it to feed on plant sap or other smaller insects. And now, one of these beetles sits on a wounded mammal and accidentally bites it. The beetle's body already has the right enzyme capable of digesting blood. So, from that moment on, the beetle doesn't want to eat anything other than red nectar. The beetle bears offspring, and it takes over the ability to feed on blood. Imagine you've been eating grass and leaves all your life, and then you try some sweet banana pudding. You wouldn't want to go back to eating good old grass now. You'd always want dessert. Insects had the same feeling when they tasted nutritious blood. Yumbo! One of the coolest theories says the thirst for blood in insects was caused by microbes. Blood isn't an ideal food for beetles. It doesn't have enough vitamins or nutrients for them. That's why a whole ecosystem of microorganisms had to form inside their intestines. These bacteria can synthesize some essential vitamins with the help of blood. These bacteria won't survive if they stop feeding on that red fluid. And when these bacteria disappear, insects have problems with development and reproduction. It's impossible to name the exact reason, since the transition from plant food to animal food happened a very long time ago. Since then, evolution has created a variety of ways to extract blood. The most famous blood-dependent species are, of course, mosquitoes. Only female mosquitoes need blood to produce eggs. When mosquitoes fly, they feel the heat, carbon dioxide, and lactic acid in the air. These smells attract the mosquitoes, so they fly to their source, an animal or a human. Then the mosquito lands on its prey and inserts its proboscis into the skin. At the same time, it secretes saliva to prevent clotting. The unpleasant skin sensation you get after the bite is an allergic reaction of your body to the mosquito saliva. Then the female produces eggs and leaves the larva in stagnant water. It could be a pond, a drain, or an outdoor pool. Small mosquitoes feed on organic substances in the water, then grow up and go on their first hunt. Black flies also feed on blood, but they don't do it as carefully as mosquitoes. The female black fly lands on the prey, uses its sharp jaws to cut the skin, and devours its lunch. Fortunately, they don't bother people too much. Their main target is livestock and wild animals. Horseflies and deerflies are the real human enemies. Their bite is quite painful. Ordinary flies that live on the street and inside human houses are super annoying and they can feast on your skin without even biting you. Everything they need from you lies on the surface. You secrete sweat, proteins, carbs, salts, sugar, and other chemicals that the fly collects with its proboscis. And of course, it hardly understands that you're a living being and don't want to share your food with it. That's why a fly isn't afraid of you. You probably notice that some people get bitten by insects more often than others. You could be going for a walk in the park and they get all over you. But your friend walking right next to you wouldn't feel anything. Hey, just means you're a sweetie. Scientists used to believe that some people actually just don't feel it when they get bitten. Their body doesn't have such a strong reaction to mosquito saliva. But recent studies have shown the number of bites depends on genetics and many other factors. Around 10-20% to of people are just more attractive to predatory insects. How lucky or unlucky are they? Mosquitoes use a variety of senses to choose the perfect prey. They have carbon dioxide and humidity sensors. They also distinguish the odors of hundreds of different chemicals released by humans. Each smell has a specific meaning for different types of mosquitoes. There are thousands of nuances and shades of odors that can attract some mosquitoes and repel others. The mosquitoes that are more aggressive like things that ordinary mosquitoes can't smell. Some mosquitoes go for your legs, others like your neck. The food and drinks you consume play an important role in that, too. They change the smell of your skin. The thickness of the skin, the amount of heat released, shades of color, and your blood type – all of that matters to insects. But there's something that attracts almost all insects. It's the smell of sweat. The dirtier you are, the more attractive you are to them. The unpleasant smell of sweat is created by millions of bacteria gathered on your skin. They attract mosquitoes. Some species like fresh sweat. 
Others prefer stale sweat with an unpleasant aroma. Mm. But if you're clean, you'll become invisible to most of the little flying monsters. The smell also depends on your genetic features. The structure of your DNA directly affects the smells you release. That's why you can say that some people are sweeter when it comes to mosquito tastes. But mosquito bites are really nothing compared to those of fire ants. When it munches on your skin, it feels like it's on fire. These ants are especially dangerous for people with allergies. Pus caterpillar is a beautifully vicious creature. It doesn't need to bite you to hurt you. This insect, also known as the southern flannel moth, is covered with thick fur hiding many poisonous thorns. A small prick with these spines, and you need medical assistance immediately. The Asian giant hornet is one of the most dangerous and painful insect bites of all. One hornet can be the size of a person's thumb, and its sting resembles a real needle. It's almost three times the size of a bee. These aggressive creatures can bite through clothes and even beekeepers' outfits. They attack in a huge swarm and can cause serious trouble to any animal. To fight them, people wear thick protective suits that look like spacesuits. But the main danger is that hornets attack beehives and greatly reduce the bee population. This can lead to a catastrophe on a planetary scale. Our planet and humanity need bees, not only because they produce honey. Bees pollinate flowers and plants. About a third of the world's food production would be impossible without bees. Cows eat vegetation that bees pollinate. And if all bees disappeared, it would greatly affect not only the health of cows, but all other cattle as well. A lot of fruits and berries would lose their rich taste if the bees stopped serving them. We get most of the cotton on the planet thanks to bees as pollinators. There would be a shortage of jeans and other clothes if the bees disappeared. The taste of many products would deteriorate, and the food would lose its useful properties. Whole species of flowers would disappear from the face of our planet. Humanity would have a really difficult time without bees. That would be a disaster. And that's another reason why giant hornets are so dangerous, and they gotta go, if you ask me. So, you're at home, enjoying your evening tea under a warm blanket, when all of a sudden you see a huge, no, enormous mosquito. Its long and gangly legs have a span of your palm, and it clumsily bumps into all the obstacles it meets. Despite its awkward appearance, it's still terrifying. What if it carries malaria? What if it eats you alive in your sleep? Slowly, not to draw the monster's attention to yourself. You get out from your soft chair and run for it into the bathroom, lock yourself in there, and open the browser on your phone. After a few seconds, you draw a ragged breath of relief. Turns out, it's just a crane fly, not a mosquito at all. It might look like a ferocious beast, but it's actually peaceful and even defenseless. Many crane flies don't even have mouths, so they don't eat at all. And those that have a mouthpiece will only munch on sweet flower nectar. Crane flies are really clumsy in the air. Their rather short wings are no match for their huge bodies and long legs. So they're slow, and it's easy to catch them. Birds and frogs, as well as bats and cats, love them as a treat. The only way they can avoid being eaten is by losing a limb. Their legs easily break off even when nothing touches them. And if you're still unconvinced not to scram and set your house on fire when you see one, consider this. Crane flies can tell you if the water pool you're about to swim in is of good quality. If you see these bugs on or above the water, you're good to go. Even more, fishers often make their bait look like the crane fly larva. Ah, this makes it more appetizing for the fish. But while Googling, you get engrossed with reading up on some other weird and crazy bugs. For example, here's the human face stink bug. Nah, they don't really stink, at least for humans. They give off pheromones that attract other stink bugs, letting them know there's food nearby. The most peculiar feature of it is in the name. A man-face stink bug has a face on its back, with three black dots drawn in red. The vibrant color of its back warns predators that the bug isn't tasty or even poisonous, while the black eyes draw attention from them to the vulnerable head. Saddleback caterpillar's name is also quite telling. 
It looks like some creature from another planet with a bright green saddle over its back. And the saddle is, sadly, the only safe part of the thing to touch. The spines you see all over the rest of its body are sharp and highly poisonous. If you want to give it a friendly tap on the back, make sure you don't touch anything else. Well, well, we have a titan beetle next. Meet the largest beetle in the whole world. It can grow as long as your entire palm, complete with fingers. Seeing one in the wild can be a shocking experience, especially if it flies right in your face. But don't fret. Thankfully, this giant is placid and won't bite you if you don't mean it harm. Still, if you make it angry, never let its mandibles touch you. The bug will hiss and bite, and what such snap can crack a pencil in half? What's interesting, an adult titan beetle doesn't feed at all. It doesn't need food to survive. As a larva, it gets enough energy to keep it well-nourished even when grown up. Ooh, I love that ability. An even more menacing-looking bug is a giant weeda. Living in New Zealand, these cricket-like creatures look like someone forgot to lock the portal to the infernal. A massive, beefy body with six thorny legs, long alien-looking antennae, and big mandibles that just might cut steel. Well, in fact, these giant insects are quite peaceful and won't bite unless provoked. And even if they do, it's not as bad as you might think. There are videos with Wheatas biting hands of people holding them and doing no harm at all. So don't let it scare you, even though such an insect might weigh more than a full-fledged sparrow. Atlas moths look like they have three heads, two of which are serpents. These pretty nocturnal flyers have strange shapes on the tips of their wings that look like snake heads. This seems to be their mode of defense from predators. And that's also why they're sometimes called cobra moths. In Southeast Asia and India, where they normally dwell, atlas moths are often found on butterfly farms producing silk. And that's some sight. The wingspan of one such moth can reach 10 inches. That's larger than your hand. Peacock spiders are perhaps the cutest arachnids in the world, second maybe only to their jumping cousins. They're so tiny, you probably wouldn't even notice one scrambling through your kitchen. But if you get a chance to take a closer look, do it. Peacock spiders are beautiful. They have large, beady eyes, a shiny blue and red coat, and cute fuzz on their body and legs. And their mating dance is something else entirely. Too bad they only live in Australia. Another moth on the list, the hummingbird moth. Remember the atlas one, how huge it was? Well, this one's as big as a hummingbird and holds much more resemblance to its namesake than that. The speed at which it flutters its wings, the long tongue to drink flower nectar, and even the sound it makes when flying, all of it makes you wonder if it's really a moth after all. Of course, the fuzzy critter is absolutely safe, and you should consider yourself lucky if you ever see one. Longhorned orb weaver spider is one of the most unusual arachnids in the world. It's just your regular spider in all respects, but for some reason, it boasts two long curved horns on its back. The back itself is bright orange to ward off predators. Red means danger. But scientists are still unsure why this spider needs those prongs. So there's a web of mystery for you. The soft rustling of leaves underneath, a pile of them slightly moving, and a big mighty horn shows up. It's the Hercules beetle, one of the largest beetles on the planet. Almost half of its size comes from that horn on its head. Thanks to this wonderful appendage, you know exactly it's a male. Females don't have it at all. Yet the name comes not only from the horn, but from the amazing ability of this giant to haul extremely heavy loads. Its strength is second only to dung beetles. A Hercules can carry as much as 850 times its own weight. If you ever see a bug with five heads wearing a pointy cap, no, you're not on another planet. It's a Brazilian tree hopper. Straight from a sci-fi movie and onto your screens here, this insect is a real mystery. It's small and secretive, and much is still unknown about it. No one knows why exactly the tree hoppers have these fuzzy balls on their heads. But they've only got one head after all. <laughs> that much is certain. Going for a swim in a freshwater pond somewhere in the African tropics, 
Watch your toes. You can get a giant water bug hunting them. It's a predatory bug and the largest of its kind. With those huge pincers, it's no wonder it's commonly known as an alligator flea and a toe biter. The bite of this water-dwelling monster is really quite powerful. It grabs its prey with the front legs and then slowly munches on it. And when I say it's a predator, I mean it. Giant water bugs' favorite food is fish and amphibians. Despite their name, scorpion flies aren't related to scorpions. They get this moniker thanks to their tails, which look a lot like the notorious arachnids. Seeing a flying scorpion is a daunting sight at best, but fear not, these critters are small and gentle, and they can't even bite you. Only the males have such a tail, and they use it to attract females. Hey! What do you imagine when you hear the words walking stick? Certainly not a bug, but that's exactly what it is. Look at this twig and try to guess. Is there something alive on it or not? Yes and no. This twig is not a twig at all. It is a walking stick. These insects have developed a fascinating camouflage. They're long and unassuming, able to stay still for hours on end, which makes them look like dry twigs. But as soon as you touch one, it scrambles away on its gangly legs. Thanks to their appearance, predatory birds often miss walking sticks in the dense foliage. And their Australian kin give off a pleasant scent, something like peanut butter. Ooh, yum!